For this video, we're calling all fashionistas, culture enthusiasts, foodies, and art lovers. Have you ever wondered where the iconic brand Gucci calls home? Look no further than beautiful Florence, Italy. In today's video, we'll show you why despite its small size, Florence is one of the most visited cities in Italy. We're continuing our two-part mini-series today to show you what we did across a few days in Florence and Pisa. If you missed the first part, check out our guide to the nearby cities of Bologna and Verona and see how to get around this region easily and what we did while we were here. As usual, let's stick that out of office on and let's check it out. Florence is just south of Bologna in north central Italy and can be easily reached by flying from any major European airport or by train. It's just under an hour by train from the nearby hub of Bologna, which is where we came from to visit Florence. The city is relatively small and can be navigated by foot. From Florence, I also did a day trip to Pisa, where the famous Leaning Tower of Pisa is. The train system is easy to navigate in Italy, and the train was from the central station in Bologna to the central station in Florence, which is called Firenze Santa Maria Novella. From there, it was a 20 minute walk to my accommodation. I was staying nearby, near the Basilica di Santa Croce. I started the day at the most famous landmark in Florence, the Duomo. This iconic red domed building is actually a cathedral and is officially known as the Cattedrale di Santa Maria del Fiore. You can explore the cathedral inside or you can climb the 463 steps to the top for a panoramic view of Florence. Make sure to buy your tickets in advance. They were sold out the day I went, so instead we went to the art bar for a stunning view of the Duomo itself. The drinks here are more expensive than you'll find elsewhere, but you're paying for the view. Then, time for a quick stop at a highly recommended and affordable dinner spot. This was a view from my balcony the next morning of the River Arno going through Florence. Then, it was straight for more food and a walk through the city for a traditional Italian sandwich at Panetteria e Susichera. After fueling, I walked up to Michelangelo's Plaza, passing by the famous area of La Rampe, or The Ramp, an architectural and water feature built in the 1800s that separates Piazza San Nicolo and Porta Romana. You may have noticed that there are some hills in the distance of Florence, and in a short walk from the city centre, you can find what many say are the best views in the city. Named after the famous Renaissance artist Michelangelo, the Plaza Michelangelo is a popular gathering spot. It's a steep 15 minute walk up, but once there, you can get sweeping views of Florence and its iconic landmarks, including the Duomo, the Arno River, and the Ponte Vecchio. Make sure to walk farther down the Pazale to Abbazia di San Miniato al Monte, one of the most beautiful Romanesque abbeys, where you can explore a bit inside and for more panoramic views. This is a great spot to get your Instagram picture and views of the city, as well as catching the sunset or sunrise. Back at Plaza Michelangelo, there is a square with a bar if you want to sit down, or if you, like me, like to sit back and check out some of the local musicians while admiring the views, you can also buy a soft drink or food from some of the sellers. When getting back into town, it was time to check out the second rooftop bar with views of the city, Angel Bar. It's part of a hotel and a bit more upscale, but my cocktail was incredible, and this is a strong recommendation from me. If you fancy a couple more bar recommendations, check out the Quirky Mayday Bar, quirky as you can see by its interior. It was a quiet weekday night, but the popcorn was free and the cocktails were really, really good. Or for a different vibe, check out Rasputin for your evening cocktails. This speakeasy is located across the river and a bit tricky to find, but you won't be disappointed. And back to the Duomo. So the Duomo is enormous and there are a few buildings to see here. The first building I visited was the Duomo Bell Tower and Baptistery. As I mentioned earlier, climbing the beautiful Duomo does require a time ticket, and as such there is a risk they may sell out, as I experienced earlier, so make sure you book in advance. The Duomo Bell Tower is named after the artist entrusted to build the tower, Giotto de Bandone. This gothic design bell tower provides some of the best views of the Duomo and is a must visit. The bell tower construction started in 1334, and Giotto was one of the most prominent artists and architects of the time. The baptistery is next to the bell tower, although as you can see, it was under maintenance. Dedicated to St. John the Baptist, this is an architectural gem with an octagonal shape and a marble facade that dates back to the 11th century. Though we know it as the Duomo, that is actually referring to the dome of the Cathedral de Santa Maria del Fiore. 
Florence is a very popular tourist destination, and one of the things you're gonna unfortunately have to get used to are the queues. Again, buy your tickets in advance, leave time for the attraction queues, and the cathedral is no exception. The cathedral is grand as you would expect, and your ticket also covers the underground archeological site underneath the Duomo, which you can see here. Then I'll let you in on a little secret. If you need a break after all that exploring and all of those steps, I found a spot for a coffee where there were no other tourists when I was there. This is at the Biblioteca Oblery. Only a seven minute walk away from the Duomo in the heart of the city, the Mercado Centrale is a vibrant food and goods market and a great spot for a casual bite to eat. This is a two-story market with an array of stalls including fruits, vegetables, spices, where you can sample local products like cheeses, meats, and of course, gelato. But if you head upstairs, you'll find a food court with a variety of options as well. It's a vibrant place to hang out with a mix of locals and tourists alike. The market has been around since 1874, where it started out as a wholesale market, serving as a hub for the trade and distribution of grocery products around the city before evolving into the market that we see here today. Next, we're going on to the Uffizi Gallery, one of the most famous landmarks in Florence. Also located in central Florence, right next to the river, this is all within 15 minutes walking. The gallery, of course, is an art gallery and houses art by some of the world's most famous artists. The gallery is housed within the Grand Uffizi Palace, originally built in the 16th century, and the collection focuses mainly on Italian Renaissance and houses works by artists including Botticelli, Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, and Raphael, along with many others. Here, you can see famous pieces including Botticelli's The Birth of Venus, to Michelangelo's Tondo Doni, and Leonardo's Annunciation. The journey through the time period means that Uffizi is not just for art lovers, but is a journey through the history and culture of Florence itself. In addition to its collection, the setting is also stunning. The museum overlooks the picturesque Piazza della Signoria and provides views of the city's historic center, including the majestic Palazzo Vecchio and the Duomo. While exploring the museum, take a moment to soak in the beauty of its courtyards and admire the panoramic vistas from the windows. This is a good place to get tickets in advance, but you can also book guided tours. Because the food in Italy is so amazing, I can't resist telling you about another sandwich stop, this time at Al Antico Venao. This place, as you can see, is very popular with tourists and locals alike, and you should expect a queue. Don't worry, it tends to go quickly, it took me 10 minutes. Across the river Arno from the main part of the city, you'll find the famous Boboli Gardens and Palazzo Pitti. The Palazzo Pitti is a Renaissance palace dating from 1458 and was originally built for a rich Florentine banker before being purchased by the Medici family. Hundreds of years later, it was used as a base by Napoleon. It's huge and today the building hosts many museums and galleries to continue your cultural exploration. The gardens surrounding it are called the Boboli Gardens, massive and spread out over 11 acres. These gardens are filled with greenery, sculptures, and fountains, a true Italian fairy tale garden. It's a great oasis from the city, and of course, there are more panoramic views of the city itself. Tickets for the gardens are about 10 euros, but if you're planning on visiting multiple attractions in the city, check out combo attraction passes. My final stop in Florence was the Hospital of Innocence. The hospital was established in the 15th century and was one of the first institutions in Europe specifically dedicated to the care and welfare of abandoned children. Architecturally, the building marks the beginning of Renaissance architecture in Florence. The building was designed by famous architect Filippo Brunelleschi, and today the Hospital of the Innocents serves as a museum and cultural center. The next morning, I only had a few hours to spare before my flight, and I decided to spend the morning going to see the iconic Leaning Tower of Pisa. Yes, you can reach here in a day trip from Florence. The train journey is just about under an hour from Florence to Pisa, and it's super easy to navigate. Pisa is a small city with a population of under 100,000 people. You can easily explore the city on foot, and I spent some time just walking around the city. Besides the obvious, Pisa is also known for its stunning Square of Miracles, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. But of course, I was really here for the Leaning Tower of Pisa, the tower that captures the imagination of people from around the world. It's known for its distinctive tilt, which is caused by the foundation sinking into the ground during its construction in the 12th century. Despite the lean, it managed to stay standing for centuries. 
you can actually purchase tickets to go inside. And with that final exploration, it was time for me to head back to the Florence airport and head back to London. I hope you enjoyed this two-part mini-series where we explored Bologna, Verona, Florence, and for a short while, Pisa in just under a week. We've done a lot of Italy exploring. We actually also have a lot of other Italy guides out there, so please do check out the other videos on our Italy playlist. They include places like Naples, Rome, and the Amalfi Coast. Thanks for traveling with us today. Subscribe to us to catch the next videos and the end of our Australia tour, as well as lots of other upcoming destinations.